All right, so in this example, ladies and gentlemen, we have the amount of carbon. So C is going to represent the amount. Holly, can I borrow your calculator, please? please? Thank you. So C represents the amount of carbon, and T represents the number of years, right? And that's, this is going to be the amount of carbon that is left in a substance. This is the equation that models how much, is going to be, how much carbon is going to be left within a substance um, after so many years. So then they first want to say, well, how, mu how much of this substance is in the initial amount? So remember, t represents time. So if we're talking about t is going to be um, initial, what value should we give t? Zero, right? To save a little bit of time, let's just think about this. If I put zero in for t, zero times this big number is going to be zero. e, any number, remember e represents a number, or even a variable, it doesn't, well, e represents a number, but even if you had a variable, e raised up to zero is going to be one. One, one times 20 is 20. So the initial amount is 20. And I don't know if they're talking about in grams. So that's 20 grams. OK? Um, now, the next thing we, now the next thing that they're looking into for us to do is determine how much is going to be left in 10,400 years. So basically what I'm going to do is put in t, I'm going to put it 10,400. So in your calculator, you have to type that in. So it would be 10,400 times negative 0.1231216. And then so I have um, carbon equals 20 times e to the negative 1.26464. You, you want to make sure that you're not rounding, always trying to use the exact value. If you want to use the answer function, function in your calculator, that's really preferred. So I can just do 20 um, times e raised to the negative 1.26. 464. And the amount of carbon that I get, I can round at this end. I'll round to the nearest hundredth, 5.65 grams. OK? Um, for the rest of the problem, this one kind of gets a little bit of a difficult 